Matt Lagarde right. of the Color Flies on the local buzz. Dude, I'm sorry it's taking so long to get you on here, man. I'm finally pumped that you're on that we're actually talking, which is great. I feel like it's been yeah. a back and forth for quite a while now, but it's good yeah. to meet you in the digital sense, man. I'm a big fan of your guys' band. Congrats on the release this past week, and I know you guys put the video out for Snails. That's yeah. a rad song, and I love the DIY aspect to your band in general. It's very cool. You guys are definitely true rock and roll. Everything about you guys seems like you just kind of do your own thing, and you have your own type of thing that you're doing. Um, as far as DIY stuff goes, is that intentional? You guys just kind of found yourself in this world. We So when we were kids, I remember um, we were like teenagers. We were like 16 years old or something like that. We always thought, hey, why don't we like – start a band right because the band that we would see it play at our high school regularly we thought sucked a lot we were just <laughs> like oh we can we could we could beat this right we have yeah. all rock power we could beat this and um so oh let's start a band with everything that we ever wanted to do so it's like it's not just one band because this band is like one band so we're like let's be many different bands and yeah. not really be able to be pigeonholed into this thing and so um we've even from the beginning we were like okay we'll start in a garage we'll play we'll play these concerts to our neighborhoods and stuff like that this will be fun and then it kind of progressed from there to be like oh let's go to a studio and make a record like that's what bands do they make albums right so yeah go make our own album and we did and it was you know for being 17 years old we moved like more than 500 copies of this this album we made in my dad's friend's basement you know and it sounded okay and then we were like okay well maybe we could really make a go out of this and then we just sort of from that point on went from there that's awesome how many years has this band been together i saw online it says like you joined a lot of social media like in 2010 was it around that time or before yeah, i'd say 2009 probably okay but yeah we've been a band for a long time so that's awesome. But, Is it all three original members still? All three of y'all are the original OG ones? Yep, we're the OGs. That's awesome. To keep a band together that long is almost impossible. It's a feat in itself, man. Congrats on that. Well, that's the thing is band, band members have left so many times and I've been stuck picking up the pieces. But in those in those times, I've made interesting music by myself even that I put out under the Color Flies moniker. So, um, yeah, but now it's just... a us as we started so it's nice and then we recorded an album um with a member big star and rem producing um this la over these last couple years and it's the three og members and it feels really weird because it's like yeah you dream when you talk about like wouldn't it be cool if one day you know we're in a studio for days and then when you get there it's kind of like i think it gets lost somehow in translation yeah you know what I no, mean? It's like, true. yeah, it's like everything in really, between. Totally. You don't it. It's not this. You don't think it. It's not what it, you'd think it would be, or something. Yeah. Parts of it are, but at the same time, you know. Yeah, when, I feel like it's looking at one of your personal heroes who's telling you to immediately figure out a guitar harmony to something you just came up with. You're like, oh, <laughs> am I that good? Can I? Yeah. I don't know. Oh See, man, did you feel the pressure? Did you actually come rise to the occasion? That's a definitely a high pressure situation. Someone you look up to. How was that? I I think we rose to the occasion. We made a record I'm really proud of. It's called Dysphagia. It'll be out next year. Um it's uh uh Greg Richling from The Wallflowers and an ex executive producer uh oh, nice. on it as well. And and uh yeah, I'm yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of what we accomplished as a band. And we recorded essentially what is two albums, the a CD and then a vinyl that will come out, which will be our first that has alternate material. Oh, nice. Um, there were talks about Sony, of us signing with Sony or having them release some of it too. Yeah. Um, at, at least distro. Um, but then, yeah, I, and then we recorded probably like 60 songs altogether. Oh, Not, wow just just over the period but with the og band like so okay i'm kind of excited because it's like really fruitful period for us but then there's the production aspect of working with somebody who's a world-class talent you know oh absolutely man how did that come to be like how do you guys get to work with someone like that do you just reach out to someone like that or they find you or 
I've had it happen both ways where somebody sees my work and then reaches out to me and I'm, it's totally unexpected. And, and then the other ways where I reach out to them and say, Hey, I've been a big fan for a long time. And if you ever want to work, here's a sample of what we do. And they really respond to it. So I've had things where it's like, I've been invited to LA from Rachel Hayden from that dog where she's like, Oh, come see our show. Cause she was a fan of the band or whatever. And then, you know, you don't expect to meet like a member of the Pixies or something like that, but it happens. Yeah. And then just connections happen that way. And then that's just how it is. And you know, Oh yeah, no, absolutely, man. It's definitely, it's a, it's a smaller world than people think it really truly is. I believe that, you know, and I believe that any, any, every, everything is an opportunity. I've always been a very opportunistic person. Take yeah. care of whether that's bad or good. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I, I think that, you know, you gotta, you gotta promote your band and you really have to believe in it. And I've been absolutely. made fun of that for sure, but <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. You know. But I think you're right. And if it's, if it's good, I feel like I have a friend who uh, hosts a radio show very similar to this in uh, St. Louis, and he plays his own band every week, like one of his own songs. And people always just roast him for it, but the songs right. are always really good. So it's like, dude, like as long as it's good, be as proud as you want to be of it. As long as it's something, a good product. Bad, don't be very proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it see as a big secret. If that's the case. <laughs> There's things on our first record that people have heard that I'm just like, oh, I'm so embarrassed, but like, oh yeah, that's okay. It's my kitty. Um, oh, nice. The song Hannah the Kitty Cat is about her. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like uh, there's things I wish people didn't know about, maybe, but at least we try. That's the only thing is I, I'm, I'm glad it exists, whether it's good or not. Yeah. I we like went that. There and it was that moment. You know? Yeah, absolutely, man. What do you guys think when it comes to, we're talking to Matt Lagarde of the Color Flies and the local buzz. What are your thoughts as far as songwriting goes? I know you guys are DIY. You do your own stuff, do your own thing. I did see an interview somewhere online with you a while back where you talked about how you didn't really write with other people. Um, is that the case? Like you guys just kind of write as a band? Are you guys more into that type of way? We were, I've always been the type of person that wakes up in the morning, makes coffee, gets a guitar and just starts playing. And, and my whole life, I've, I've sort of, since I started playing the instrument, I've just really just been, okay, what can I do today? What can I write today? And I think that, yeah, I think I've always just sort of written and I've never written with other people, like really. And it's yeah. just sort of served me well. <laughs> and then yeah. I kind of. I mean, I, I introduced the band and then we just get to work on it. But I guess the songs really start with me. Um, not to be like, you know, narcissistic or anything like that, but I, I have the basic kernel of the idea. And then we go from there. And our songs are sometimes strange. I mean, they are very strange. I think sometimes when I listen to other music, I realize, oh, you know, some of this is like. Some of it's like in an XTC territory or something like that. You know, it's just very. Yeah very weird but it's like if it once it's filtered through me i guess it kind of comes out that way yeah well the funny thing about the songwriting world it's so popular now especially here in nashville it's it's a massive you know industry um it's funny because if you look at history um two really good examples obviously freddie mercury writing bohemian rhapsody by himself but then also there she is but then also like Seal wrote Kiss from a Rose all by himself. So you have these artists who could write these amazing songs by themselves. But then here in the music industry present day, you put seven people in a room and they write the most boring bro country song you've ever heard. So to me, there's just something about a true artist who has something to say. And that's what songwriting is about. You can't really fake it. You know, I the I think, yeah, the the iconic people of our, you know, of our musical past like prince is a perfect example of some absolutely who writes their own music that's incredible and you know like but I, I mean especially i've been in nashville before and nashville particularly i get that there are incredible songwriters out there that are able to really really write but they know they know what they're doing you know yeah and i guess there's people that they hire that it, like this is a chorus guy. He only writes choruses like Richard yeah, Martin. Yeah. And stuff like that. He's the, he's the, he's the guy that Swedish guy that did the Backstreet Boys and then sing, wrote all the That's pop music. Right. Yeah. Credible songwriter. I'll never like that. I look up to people that are able to craft melodies that like, I'm a huge Manny Moore fan, for example. 
Yeah. I just I do nothing but listen to Mandy Morrison mornings. That's all I listen to. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, or Janet Jackson. You know? Yeah, yeah. And and there's just people that are they they can do it. You know, they're really they know. And so I really aspire to that. Whether people know that or not, with my alternative bad rock band, I, I love <laughs> I love melody. And once this yeah. new album comes out, you'll see that you'll see that it's the Beatles, Beach Boys, like. I love Melody more than anything probably in the world. Yeah. I love that, man. Talking to Matt Lagarde awesome. of the Color Plus on the local buzz. One thing on your Instagram page I constantly see on your personal Instagram at Spillhouse is a uh, constant stuff. It kind of fits the shelf behind you. Uh, nostalgic things or kind of like uh, just like pop culture items. And uh, I wanted to say uh, you had, a, I, I saw a post about one of your most prized possessions is an ALF trading card. Was that you being funny or is that real? Because I love that show. Nobody talks about ALF anymore. It's been a minute. Okay. Just, just one. I, I love Alf, but just one. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see what this is going to be. If he has an Alf costume, this would be the greatest interview of all time. No way. On the guitar. <laughs> I, and another guitar that I have has an Alf sticker and it goes all the way across it. But that's amazing. I'll tell you a funny story. I love Alf and I was getting into the show in a way that I'd never really had before in a good way. And uh, my friend, Adam Casto, he's this like pop culture, Cuisinart. He, he takes all these bands that you love, gets with, with the people that are in those bands and um, creates albums with them. It's incredible. They're just heroes, yeah. like alternative heroes, you know, take anybody you can think of. And, and, members of the screaming trees, just alternative heroes. And he loves pop culture. He was friends with Anne from the mom from Alf. Oh, wow. And somehow something came up and she added me on Facebook or we, it was something happened. And I, I got to have conversations for hours about Alf with her. That's and amazing. I sent her our, my music. And she became a fan. And I have a, I have like a screenshot of her railing into me for singing badly on a song. <laughs> and it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. That's amazing. I and love from it. Alf destroyed me completely, told me I was lazy <laughs> and I sing lazy. But on another song, she said, this is what I'm talking about. This is great. You know, so, I mean, that's maybe the yeah. two sides of my you know, but it's just, I, awesome. love, I love that stuff. I love pop culture. I love the idea of being in the lexicon of, of anything. I think that's insane. Yeah. You, know? you know, one of the things that the most amazing thing has ever happened to me was one of my fans in, um, uh, in the Midwest summer. I don't remember. She called into Tim Heidecker's, uh, radio show and said, do you want to listen to my, my friend's band, the color flies? And I'm a huge fan. Huge Tim Mayer fan, like huge. Yeah. And um, obsessive. Seen every episode, can quote anything you, you throw at me. Um, and he had just heard somebody uh, had called in to ask him to listen to Death Grips, which he yeah. hated. He hated it. <laughs> and so um, DJ Doug Pound, he was like, you want me to look up the color flies? And he's just like, no. And so he didn't refuse to listen to it. I saved that clip and I put it on my YouTube and it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. My he personal hero totally rejecting me and saying, that no, is I amazing. <laughs> I don't want to listen to that crappy band. That's awesome. Band. It could and I do... be better than, and my drummer and I, he's a big Tim and Eric fan too. We're just like, that's like the greatest thing you could have said. Oh just yeah. Tim way like, no. Just to have that clip, man, to be razzed by one of your heroes. That's amazing. I know. I also I love, love the uh, that Smashing Pumpkins box behind you. I actually have that box set. I got it for Christmas back in 1996 when I was a kid. And my mom snapped a picture of me opening it. And I'm like super stoked in the picture. A couple years ago, somehow the Smashing Pumpkins got a hold of that picture. I think it was on my Instagram or something. Oh, wow. And they used it for their Christmas on Instagram. Like, Merry Christmas. I hope, you know, it was like the best thing. That's and, the uh, greatest. It's so 
Oh, and it's so funny because I obviously grew up loving the pumpkins, but I love the the innocence of the picture because I was literally just 13 and opening yeah. up a gift and being stoked about it. Like, it wasn't like it is now where you take a picture and it's all about angles and for you're sure. hoping people will see it. But uh, they that. used it, they well, used it for wearing, one Christmas. I'm wearing the Darcy Rolling Stone t-shirt. Nice. That's amazing. So, I love it's like it. a Siamese dream era. Yeah, no, it's dope. I love it. Well, Matt, since you're here, man, one thing we do here at the show before you get out of here is we play something called the five random question game. If you would like to play, my friend, shall we it. play? All, All right. right. Five Can random I questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case, just in case you need them. In case I ask yeah. you a really cool question. Right, Boom. Right, right. There you go. Five random questions of Matt Lagarde of the Color Flies on the local buzz. So I wanted to ask you, there's a lot of trends going around right now. I've noticed uh, people are doing here in town, at least where I'm from, they're doing these tribute show nights. So you have like emo night and then you have grunge night and all these different things. So I wanted to ask you if you had to go to any of those emo night or grunge night. I, I'm going to preface this by saying that I am, I've been called a, a grunge band my entire career by magazines and interviews. But I will say that the spirit of grunge lies within. I love that. Right on. And that David from Pearl Jam recently said that I've done well for myself. So oh, there you go. That's the question. Yeah. So he'll be at grunge night wearing those sunglasses, which look very grunge by themselves too. Question very number two, with Matt Lagarde on the local buzz. So have you seen this trend going around? It's the TikTok trend called teenage look where everyone's like looking at this TikTok filter and it's supposed to show you younger. It just takes some of the wrinkles out. It doesn't put you in your teenage right. clothes or anything, but a lot of people are crying. It's a little, little unsettling. They're just like sobbing, looking at pictures of themselves. But I wanted to ask you, when you think of that TikTok trend, do you think to the, tell to those people grow up? Or let me get my tissues. I'm going to cry as well. I, so I think that youth is like, it's a really strange concept that the past has already happened, but you can look back on the past, but it's gone forever. So I understand people being upset about not being able to grasp something that they felt so, you know, so viscerally. And so I'm, I'm a crier. I say, I'm going to cry. I'm crying wow. with you. Yeah. Let's get the also tissues. And up it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> the present is true. now. Well, I feel like we're in rock bands. Like growing up is just hard in general. And we never really do grow up because we're just guys in rock bands. Question well, number three. <laughs> what were you going to say? Yeah, true. yeah. I, mean, I went recently. I have this thing where it's like, I have a, like kind of a folder on my phone where I was trying to organize all the old color fly stuff. You know, there's more than like, 3,000 pictures in there of shows from us being teenagers to now. And it's like, that was a trip to go through. Like that's, oh, and I'm also in the middle of editing a video of the last five years of even playing shows and just interviews and stuff like that. And it's just, it's going to take, it's going to take forever. And it's, yeah. it's crazy to think about how much the, the amount that we've done. And then, yeah. so I understand seeing youth and being like, oh, that was me then. But this is, I mean, it's nice to also live in the present. This is me now. Yeah. A hundred percent a healthy medium. That's what I always say. Absolutely. Question number three with Matt Lagarde on the local buzz. Who do you think is the most underrated rock band? The band that doesn't get the amount of credit they should get. Oh man. Well, I love Cheap Trick. That's, that's a good one. Big Star is like a Absolutely. totally underrated band. Incredible. A hundred percent. You know, it's weird. Like more and more. I'm loving bands like Ario Speedwagon and Journey and just like really appreciating like the sense of musicality. Absolutely. You take away the artifice of everything being like, well, this was the 80s. And, you know, it's like, but the songwriting, I'm just like, this is beautiful. It's achingly beautiful. You take any of those songs, play them acoustically. And it's a totally different vibe. And I'm so into that. We were, we were, we were talking about working on a shoegaze cover of um, uh, Keep on Loving You. Oh, dude. You should do it. It's That'd be super awesome. Slow and like, <laughs> just like it's huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Question number four, Matthew Lagarde of the Color Flies on the local buzz. What is your biggest fear of something going wrong on stage? Like biggest fear that could totally ruin a show. What's your biggest fear? You know, when we were touring like all the time and like we we're playing like the whiskey and stuff like that, and we were playing shows in LA and Hollywood and just like on tour with green jello and stuff too. Like I, I would have these dreams where it's like, 
I can't hear anything. And I had this reoccurring dream where I was on this weird slope playing, but the band was so far away. Mady was so far away and Devin was so far behind me that, and the audience is booing and they're hating everything. And I can't <laughs> hear anything. <laughs> and I and, and I look down and my microphone is sinking into the ground. No way. It was it was I've had that I've had that dream so many times. That's crazy. It's, it's scary. I mean, you don't you don't like the normal average person doesn't think about sound that way, but you're at the mercy of like sound when you play live and it's just like you oh, have a really bad show, you know? Absolutely, man. That's wild. Question number five with Matt Lagarde of the Color Flies. The final question. So you could have your dream tour. We're talking 75 dates, direct support, any artist alive or dead. But when you get back from this tour, the deal you've made to get this tour is you have to give me your ALF trading card. Do you oh, take the tour? It's going to be the B-52s and absolutely. <laughs> so quick. <laughs> I love it. My man, we're right on. I'll make a, I'll make a little spot on my shelf for a future uh, card. Okay, and I'll get great, you great. a text and make wait. it happen for y'all. <laughs> Wonderful. I love it. Well, Matt, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, man. I want to get into this brand new tune here and spin it for you, man. And it's just honest. I'm, I'm sorry it took so long to get you on the show, man, but I'm glad you got to come on. And I get totally just... fine. Life, life, life happens. Jeff Goldberg. Oh man. And there's an open door policy for bands. I like on this show. You're definitely one of those bands. Anytime you want to come on the show, you just come around, knock on my zoom cam and boom, I'll appear, my I'll friend. I'll come to Nashville. We'll do a live. We'll do a live. I would love that. Let's definitely do it, man. That'd be fun. Sounds good, man. Thanks a lot. Awesome.